Training camp is nearing an end as the team is getting ready for their first road trip of the preseason. And roster cuts are officially being made for head coach Ron Rivera and company. We talk about what it means for the remaining players as they battle for the final 53. And with a matchup against the quarterback Pat Mahomes on deck this weekend, we preview some of the top matchups we are expecting to see play out on Saturday. And we send Logan and Santana into the film room to dissect the defense's performance against the Panthers in their preseason opener. And as our rookies continue to get acclimated to life in the NFL, second round draft pick Fedarian Mathis shares his favorite part about being a pro. Come on in, Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, and Santana Moss. Okay, here we are getting ready for preseason game number two. And if you want a measuring stick, why not go up against Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs? Uh, we even heard Deron Payne say, yeah, he wants to because it's a good measuring stick for just where this defensive line is, especially with the mobile quarterback. But how much, Logan, do you want to see the starters in the preseason game? I like to see them play about a half. I mean, I want to see them get in a full rhythm, get some, get a kind of a soft game plan in and, and execute. That's what, I, that's what I'm looking for. I think that's the norm. You know, one of the things about one of those, those games where you're kind of prepping for the season, you want to see the guys with extended time. So um, a, a whole quarter or a half would be fine with me too. We shall see. Excited to be going down to Kansas City. Unfortunately, not everybody is going to be making the trip as this is the time of year where you do have to make roster cuts. And before we get to Saturday's game, well, the team did just that, cutting the roster down to 85 players on Tuesday afternoon. Team released cornerbacks Troy Apke and Devontae Bosby, along with offensive guard Deion Calhoun. And a pair of players were placed on the reserve slash injured list. That would be tight end Samus Reyes and fullback Alex Arma. Uh, so any of these surprises to you? I know Troy Apke's been a player that's been around for quite a while and now it just means Deron Payne is the only player from the 2018 draft that is still on this roster. I mean I don't think there's any surprises there for me. I think you know Apke hadn't been practicing. Bosby had just got here. Um, obviously Samis and uh, Armour were going to have a tough shot to make the team so so no real surprises there. Um, I think the next one you're going to start to see some more big names start to go next Tuesday. Yeah I was just surprised with Apke finally getting up out of here. I'm not saying that I wanted to see him go you know it's just you know for the simple fact that you know, I'm just being realistic. Like, you have a guy around that has the potential, and you feel that, you know, sooner or later that potential is going to show some promise, and it just hadn't, you know, picked up. So, um, you know, I thought this year would probably be that year that he yeah. shows, that, shows that promise, and then he's out of the door. So yeah, He was yeah. dealing with some injuries as well. I know that kind of limited him um, being out here and being effective as well. Uh, it's the it's the tough part of the business, yeah, and you absolutely. have to go from, what, over 90 players at the beginning of camp down to ultimately 53. When you start seeing the cuts and you go in and you realize, wait, this locker is now kind of empty next to me, does that make it real, Logan? I mean, absolutely. I mean, the whole process is real. You feel the stress of it, absolutely. But I think when guys start to leave, guys that you're friends with, guys you have lunch with, guys in your t in your meeting room, you're kind of like, man, this is this is going to get really uh, really sad here real quick. And uh, you hope you're one of the guys that's staying as opposed to going. Yeah, I was I was fortunate not to have to worry about that, but I can tell you, man, you hate seeing guys that you know that you want to see around or, or at least get a chance. You know, I, it was always a couple of guys here and there that I felt like they had been practicing well enough that just couldn't, you know, fit, you know, and I hated to see them guys leave, but just knowing that we had to do it. And, and, and to elaborate on that, like when good football players get cut, that's actually a good thing for the health of the team. It's not yeah. good for the individual, but mm -hmm. it's a good sign for the organization. Yeah. So who are some of those players? Because it's also the opportunity to make a name for yourself to stay on the roster. Santana, who has stood out to you? Man, I'm going to keep saying the guy's name. Um, uh, Michelle? Parker. Oh, Parker. 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 Stephen Parker. Parker. Yeah. Parker's kind of took over from the receiver who I was kind of, you know, a uh, fan, you know, being a, being a big fan of the first two weeks. But also, man, you know, and I'm not sure where it's going to stand for him, but Kevin Harmon, man, he's been making catch after catch in practice. And you want to see that translate over to the game because even if he can't be here, someone out there need a guy who's going to be consistent like he has been thus far for us in the camp. Yeah, and for me, it's Milo Eifler. I think he's making a really strong claim over the last couple of days to be that fifth linebacker. We'll see. The opportunity is not just everything that you do at practice, but it's also when the bright lights are on. That next opportunity will be Kansas City against the Chiefs. Now, with training camp extended through this Thursday, make sure that you are watching our Command Center Camp coverage stream where we break down all the action from the field and cover all the top storylines related to camp. You can watch on the team's YouTube channel. And if you're out at practice, uh, which Thursday is the last day to do so, make sure you use the hashtag HTTC when posting about your experience. We'll feature it on the stream. 
Now, this Saturday provides the Commanders their second opportunity to face a new opponent as they travel to Kansas City to face Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs, who are coming off their fourth straight 12-win season. Gone are some of the familiar faces like Tyreek Hill and Tyrone Matthew, but their threats still remain, which will provide the Commanders a good measuring stick before the regular season begins. Defensive tackle Duran Payne joined us on our training camp show to discuss the benefits of facing their starters. You're going to be out there against Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Um, it, it's preseason, but does well, that? Gonna, what do you? What, what measuring stick do you have to try and go after? I'm excited, I'm excited yeah. to go up against him because um, we play a bunch of like running mobile quarterbacks during the season. Yeah. So it's going to be a good test for us to uh, see how we um, can improve and what things we can do to get better. So it's kind of interesting to hear how they will use this as an opportunity. And we know in the past, yeah, like if a quarterback gets out and scrambles, you have to be able to make sure you can attest for that. And that's not easy for any team or defensive line to really take on. How much can they really kind of see where they stand going up against Pat Mahomes and what they offer? I mean, I think that's a, it's an excellent measuring stick. I think when you look at Patrick Mahomes' first preseason game against the Bears, he was fantastic. He yeah. looked like full midseason Patrick Mahomes. So this is an excellent test for these guys. Can you be disciplined rushers? Can you play disciplined coverage? He's going to test you in every single possible way. Andy Reid's going to come out in multiple formations, really see where you're at from that point. They were running with a fullback last week. So really, really outstanding test for this group. And yeah. then also another test, Santana, they've got Travis Kelsey yeah. out there. Well, Travis Kelsey is one of the best in the best when it comes to tight ends, and I'm pretty sure Logan can speak to that. But um, knowing that we have that Buffalo nickel position to mm -hmm. see, who, you know, who our guys want to be, we kind of already know one of our guys, you know, in Cam Curl, but we want to see the other guys, see how they match up with guys like Kelsey. So is that Benjamin St. Juice? Is it Derek Forrest? Who, who takes that on? I mean, I think Benjamin St. Juice is the guy with the skill set to get that done. And he, you know, he matches up physically very nicely with him. He's got very nice movement skills, great arm length. And he played in the first matchup a little bit against him. I want to see more of that because I think there's been a maturation from Benjamin St. Yeah. Juice. This is a really good opportunity for him to show that, show the fans that he's grown. And then if we're going to talk about their wide receivers going up against our cornerbacks, so well, there's no more Tyreek Hill, but Marquez Valdez-Scantling has some speed. They also added Juju Smith-Schuster, and then they drafted Sky Moore santana And then they have Watkins, Sammy Watkins. All right, he's over there, too. I right? think, no, I think he's in Baltimore now. Oh, my bad. What, what, Sorry. Look at that. Throw that over my head. Oh, yeah. I, I, I it's preseason. Yeah. It's preseason. We're still getting used to the rosters. But no, they have, a, they have a bunch of talented guys out there, and it's going to be a little different. You know, we talked about that home run hit guy who they had in Tyreek Hill. They don't have to, we don't have to worry about that, but... You're going against Pat Mahomes, and he can throw that ball to anybody yeah. he wants to up and down the field. I think that was the thing that stood out to me when I watched the preseason tape is like that He's offense like just six for six yeah, like it's six for six, and they just do a great job of creating space. And yeah. you know, uh, Scanling is a very fast receiver. Mm -hmm. Sky Moore's like kind of that Wes Welker shifty guy underneath. Mm -hmm. So they do have some playmakers and they do have some weapons. But I think the ace in the hole for that that offense is Andy Reid and that the genius that he brings. No, you just mentioned Andy Reid. We might see maybe a little bit more of the offense than we did in the first preseason mm -hmm. game, and then certainly what we will see in the third preseason game. But Andy Reid was a mentor of head coach Ron Rivera's. Uh, we already saw them face off against each other in a game in the regular season. But once again, just facing off against somebody that you, you know, you, you, you looked up to and mentored after Santana. You always want to beat that guy. You know, I remember being, <laughs> I remember playing with the Jets and Herm Edwards had to go against Dungy. And you got to think, you know, that was his understudy. So he was the guy that was under Dungy at one time. And Man, you, you saw Herm Edwards' face walking up and down that sideline looking across that dungeon. I was out there like, well, I got to make a play because this yeah. guy really wants to beat his, you know, beat his mentor. So, um, no, but I'm pretty sure even though it's being preseason, these guys want to go out there and play good, you know, up against each other. And it's also you want to show show your mentor, show mm -hmm. the guy that kind of gave you the path that, like, you are you are doing, you're kind of yeah. keeping his legacy going, right? Mm -hmm. You're keeping that coaching tree alive and in a good way, and I think – he wants to show that this roster has improved, that he's done a good job with it. I think that's a big part of it. I'm sure he wants to get that W as uh, well. Maybe, I don't know. It's I'm sure he does. It's preseason, but to it your can. point, if he wants to say, hey, you taught me well, yeah, right. you taught me so well, look what I have done. Uh, we'll see that Saturday afternoon in Kansas City. Excited to bring you the preseason game number two. Now, you don't want to miss Command Center because we have you covered each and every day. Uh, and our Command Center game day live show has got you covered all day long on game day. It is the official pregame show of the Washington Commanders. We're live on the air starting at 2 p.m. and taking you up to the start of our preseason game against Kansas City. You can watch on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and on Twitter. And then after the game, do not miss Command Center post-game live for reaction analysis and interviews with head coach Ron Rivera, quarterback Carson Wentz, and others. You can also find that on YouTube. So take command of your game days. Now, before we get to Saturday's game, we're going to send Logan and Santana into the film room to break down the defense's performance in their opener against the Panthers. 
And Jonathan Allen is coming off his first career Pro Bowl appearance, and opponents around the league are starting to take notice. Find out where he ranks in the NFL's top 100 list next. And before we go to break, though, we have a trivia question for you. Which player led Washington in rushing and receiving in last year's meeting with the Chiefs? Think you know the answer? Well, we'll find out after this quick break. We are back on Command Center. Before the break, we asked which player led Washington in rushing and receiving in last year's meeting with the Chiefs. Logan Tana, you had an idea? I'm going to say McKissick. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like you knew that answer ahead of time. Yeah, Quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. I, mean, I was the one guessing ahead of time. <laughs> he <laughs> did, he did. Trying, trying to come for me. See, Logan, man. <laughs> He did. J.D. McKissick, you are correct. 45 rushing, 65 receiving, giving him a career-high 110 yards from scrimmage. Well, last week, the team had the opportunity to finally go up against somebody else, and there's a lot of learning curves along the way, a lot of things that the team wants to focus in on and say, do more of this as well. So what can we focus in on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, we're going to give it to the guys in the film room. Julie, thanks so much here with Santana Mosh. Now we're going to talk about what we liked about the defensive side of the football. This first play is that PBU by William Jackson III and mm -hmm. by McCain. And what they're doing here is they're running like a quarters type of coverage here. And they got cover two down here at the bottom, which mm -hmm. you really like, right? A little diversifying in terms of coverage shell. And the thing I really enjoy here is watch how much grass Bob McCain has to cover in order to get to this football, right? He's over here outside the hash, Tana. Mm -hmm. And then look at him get over here and make a play on this football. That's fantastic stuff there. First thing I said, I love the coverage, you know, from um, William Jackson, and mm, then I yep. love the finish by McCain. McCain yep. showed, made sure he said, hey, if he by any chance catch this pass, let me make sure that he has second thoughts. Yeah, and I think you, you brought up William Jackson the third there, and I think that's a great point. Because watch, this This guy was a guy who looked very uncomfortable last year, very unsettled, and when I look at this, I say, this is he's, he's growing up here, mm -hmm. right? Easy turn here, and I think even if he's not there, he can make a play on that yeah. football and get that done. But again, it's not just about the coverage. These guys up front did an excellent job here, right? They're running. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be running a little game here, little uh, uh, TE, right? Tackle end. They run it on this side. Tackle end. Get around there. The thing that I like here is gets called off here for whatever reason, and Wise just finishes through yeah. to make that play. And again, on the other side too, Phil would come through here mm -hmm. just because of how selfless Casey's being. So again, that kind of more diverse rushing philosophy yeah. helps in terms of coverage. That's big, and that also helps, you know, or. Uh, don't allow that quarterback to have a clean pocket so he can make that throw too. Yeah, absolutely. And that you, that's like rush, rushing and coveraging are, are so important. Go in hand terms in of, hand. Yeah, hand in hand, absolutely. All right, and then I like this play because I think this shows a good mindset for the defense. I just want to, you know, red dot here, Jamin Davis and uh, Forrest here because I think they both play this down in a physical way. Uh, Jamin's going to meet this fullback in the hole violently, which is something that he didn't do a lot last year. You know, kind of yeah. slow to react to a lot of stuff. So I'd love to see that. So let's so go get some fullback. Bow! Yep, love that. And then here we go. Nice tackle by Forrest. A guy who I think wants to make tackles and yeah. showed up. Well, it's great just to see a guy like this who I almost didn't know he was on the team last year because you didn't see him play as much last year. And then Jamin, you know, last year we saw him doing a lot of thinking. You yeah. can see that instantly. He wasn't yeah. thinking on that one. Yeah, he knew he exactly made sure his doing. presence was felt and shown. And this guy, you know, backed him up, let him know, hey, you you do your part, I'm going to do mine. And I just want to say like this, like, you know, John, John Allen, you know, we talk about him a lot, but he deserves a lot of credit on this play too. No like just being John, you know, playing with good, like, good arm leverage here and then saying, no, come on back, get over here. And then for finishing up yeah John would have made that by stuff easy yeah and you love seeing the defense play with that kind of physicality yeah. play with that quickness there were some things to clean up but I think on the whole they did an excellent job and then here we go again they're gonna run a post here on the outside and I think this is a good example like you were talking about of a great rush and finish great rush by Casey Tuo, great finish by Daniel Wise and just what that means in terms of allowing coverage because this guy this guy wins on the post here and this yeah. is a quarters beater and so or this is a this 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 route combination is designed to beat this coverage mm -hmm. this guy's gonna dig Gonna hold this player hold here, and, and this guy's gonna come in over the top. Right behind and so this this should be a home run touchdown. Easy, easy money. But watch our guy Casey Two Hill here say, "Nope, you can't take a look at that." And then Daniel Wise finishing it off. So important to have that, you know, have good pass rushes because now you get to be uh, that more dynamic in the back end yep. as coverages. Uh, and you got to think also, yes, we want you to throw that ball because this guy here, he's doing his part. He's going to come over and yeah. probably make the same play McCain did, but you don't want to get that far. Yeah. So it was great to see those guys be able to stop it up front. Yeah, it's always nice to get a quick win, I think, you know, from a defensive line perspective. Love the angle here by Casey, attacking the outside arm with a tackle, and again, just able to flush this guy out of the pocket, 
Great job by Wise. Keep working. Yeah. Finish the quarterback good again. Good job, Thomas. You know, it wasn't it wasn't maybe the perfect uh, scenario on uh, on Saturday, but they did a lot of good things to be excited about. See if they can get that improved on going to get up against Kansas City. No doubt. Over the weekend, the NFL unveiled the first half of their top 100 players, and Jonathan Allen came in at number 88. The list is voted on by fellow players from around the league based on last season's production. Allen recorded a career-best nine sacks and earned his first career trip to the Pro Bowl in 2021, making his name known by plenty of opponents around the league. I'm fortunate to play against him twice a year, ever since his rookie year, and to watch that maturation and development go. This guy's a combination of the big guys that use finesse and the big guys that use power. And you don't know which one you're going to get, and it's very scary, I would think, for an offensive lineman. Bro, it's getting a little spooky out there, bro. It's easy to see how scary good Jonathan Allen is. However, it takes a closer look to understand why he is such a nightmare for offensive linemen. He can you know, do the reading things that are tough in certain run situations and make it difficult. John Allen with the tackle there. He's had quite the season. Here's a showcase night for John Allen. And then at the same time, he can jet up field, hit you with a quick arm over. This is just a tough matchup for the young left guard, John Runyon. He's just going to run right around him. He really mixes it up, which keeps you on your toes now more than it used to. Watch this pick stunt. Watch Jonathan Allen. He's going to go across the center's face, pick the left guard, and then just continue up. That is so hard on these offensive linemen, right? You really don't know what's coming with that guy. He keeps offensive linemen confused. He's big and strong enough, and he's explosive. Now that's a sack by Jonathan Allen. While being blocked, able to pull him down. Jonathan Allen just keeps fighting, keeps fighting, and he's able to just grab onto a leg. He got the crazy hump move. <laughs> His hump move. I can't do it, but it's like uh, they doing a real. He kind of do a rip, but instead of ripping, he take his arm and throw the offensive alignment. He just got thrown again. It's just funny to see him throw on some of the offensive linemen. Watch Allen right here. He's going to come here. Boom. And when he hits the center right there, he's like, oh, you can't grab me? All right, I'm just going to keep pushing up the field. An incredibly gifted physical athlete and powerful guy. And whenever you have athleticism and power, Boy, Allen is good. those are guys you don't like blocking. Jonathan Allen's one of those guys that will absolutely wreck a game. That's a great thing about football. Every series, you get another opportunity to be great. Whereas 93 is a fresh lineup. What more else can I say? One name missing from this 100 we might have a bone to pick with would be Terry McLaurin not there. But as offensive coordinator Scott Turner says, he should be. And hopefully next year, him and many others from the team will make the list. Now, here's a look at some of the numbers John Allen put up during his Pro Bowl season. Last year, he was the only defensive tackle in the league to have nine or more sacks, 30 or more quarterback hits, and 10 tackles for loss. And Allen's work off the field helped him earn the team's Walter Payton Man of the Year nomination for the second straight year. Making the NFL is a lifelong dream come true for most players, and this year's rookie class is finding out firsthand what life is like in the NFL. When we return, we share some of the best parts about being a pro. Commander's rookie Fedarian Mathis is having a strong start to camp. The third round draft pick got his first taste of game action last Saturday against the Panthers, where he recorded two combined tackles and 20 total snaps. As Mathis continues to adjust to life in the NFL, he was asked about his favorite part of training camp as a pro compared to camp at the University of Alabama. Not going to school. <laughs> I mean, you get to just play football, man. You can be around football all day. I think that's kind of the funnest thing, just you know, coming out here playing football and not knowing that you ain't got to you know stay up late, <laughs> uh, study for a test or anything like that. So it's been the funnest thing, just being around here, you know, being around these great teammates, you know, especially the locker room, man. But y'all can't be in the locker room. But our locker room is so fun. We got great guys in the locker room, great uh, men mentors. So it's just fun being around all those guys, also. 
I can respect that answer. You don't want to have to go to class. You just get to focus on football, although I have a feeling there's probably plenty of classwork within football Absolutely. as well. Y'all remember that? Not having to like show up to math class or science class anymore? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't taking that many math and science classes when I was at UCLA, but... What were, were you taking? I was, I was a political science and history major, so a lot of that kind of stuff. Took a stats class, which was pretty tough, but um, I remember thinking when I was a rookie that that was a really nice thing, not having to be of two minds, not having to think about school and football, just being able to focus on one thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a chance to have uh, pleasantries like that as a rookie because I was hurt half of, you know, <laughs> out the gate. But I will say this, as a pro, the fun thing about, you know, putting school behind you, you're an adult now, you know what I mean? You have to make these decisions. So that was fun enough for me just knowing that now I'm the guy with calling the shots and I have the money to do so. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a million dollar smile right there, literally. Uh, is there a favorite part of camp? I, I appreciate him saying like, look, the camaraderie in the locker room is really special with this team. I mean, to me, there's no other thing fun about camp. I mean, you get to play football. I really enjoy yeah. playing football, the physical elements of it. But on those days where you feel like total, not good, the guys you're with are the things that makes it good. Those are the memories you remember, and I totally agree with that. Yeah, I totally agree with him. I think I used to zone out when I was here. I was just here. I was a body. I was just working. But <laughs> when I th think back about it now, that's the first thing I miss, just going through the motions, going out there, knowing that I had to see these guys, knowing that we was going to go out there and we was going to be dog-tied, but we are – be out there for, with a purpose, knowing that we're trying to get ourselves better so we can have a great year. And that's one thing Coach Ron Rivera is really stressed is making sure there is a good culture, that that camaraderie does exist amongst these guys and, and really trying to vet who they do bring in to make sure that they fit. And while times we hear sometimes they might not be the best at their position, they are best for this team no. in all aspects. And that's what we're seeing is the guys having a lot of fun out there as well. Good day at camp. Yeah, great day, great day in camp. Great day. See, there we go. I love it when we can get Santana to smile. <laughs> That's going to do it for this show. We hope you enjoyed it. For Santana Moss and Logan Paulson, uh, I'm Julie Donaldson. We will see you next time. And, of course, uh, we will be with you for preseason game number two against the Kansas City Chiefs.